What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Bubbles Buzzer Beater, your moderately official Buzzer Beater YouTube channel. And today I wanted to discuss something that I think is one of the bigger aspects of Buzzer Beater that separates the average managers from the good to great managers. And that's going to be talking about managing game shape. So in this I wanted to do like a uh, a minutes per week guide for newer managers and then also discuss like ideal roster size and how that can differ depending on what your end goal is and, and how experienced you are in the game. But for newer managers, I guess just what is game shape? So if you're brand new to this channel or brand new to Buzzer Beater, game shape is essentially how tired your player is, how well they're looking in practice, and a predictor of how well they they will perform in the games that week. So it's a good indication of how sharp the player looked in practice, as you can see from the game manual right here. And if they're in better game shape, they're going to perform better in the games. And if they're in worse game shape, they're not going to perform as well. Now, for how many minutes should players be getting every week? This is something that's like not explicitly stated in the game manual. Um, this is kind of something you have to figure out as you go. Um, but for experienced managers on Buzzer Beater, the general consensus is that you know a good minute range is between like 50 and 72 minutes, roughly. And this chart right here is a uh, one that I believe was, if you guys know him, he was a uh, older manager on Buzzer Beater that did a lot of like statistical analysis for the game. But this was a chart that he created. It's a little bit blurry, so I apologize for that. But hopefully you can see it well enough to just see the distributions, where essentially it's showing how likely a player was to either stay in the same game shape, increase or decrease based on the minutes they played that week. So you can see the pink kind of area up at the very top. That's going to be what's considered like the ideal minute range. So you can see primarily it ranges from about 48.50 to about 72, 73 minutes. And then as a consensus among myself and other experienced managers that I respect and think kind of know what they're talking about, um, my minutes advice is for a decent minute range that you want your players to fall into every week is 50 to 72 minutes and then a step up above that for like a great minute range about 55 to 68 69 minutes and then for a perfect minute range i've always been a big believer in like the low to mid 60s has always given me my best results so like 60 to 66 i think is what i consider the ideal minute range and then the other thing to keep in mind with this chart and just game shape in general is that this chart doesn't include um, like stamina of the player. So there's a little bit um, margin of error for that, depending on whether your player has higher stamina or lower stamina. And then this chart was also created before um, the additional features that help with game shape as well. So as for the other factors that do impact game shape, as I said, stamina is one that can impact how many minutes your players should be playing in a week. So if they have higher stamina, like eight or nine stamina, they should be playing slightly more minutes per week. And if your player has lower stamina, so like awful, pitiful, atrocious stamina, they should be playing slightly less to stay in optimal game shape. As for the two features that were added later on in the um, game, doctors with the massage specialty, um, those doctors help players who play too many minutes in any given week. So if you have a, a week where a player played, let's say, like 84 minutes um, by accident or someone got hurt and they were forced to play more minutes. If you have a doctor with a massage specialty, that helps players who played too many minutes to not drop as drastically in game shape. So they're more likely to either stay in their current game shape or if they're you know potentially going to drop two levels with that specialty doctor, sometimes they only drop one. And then the other one is the sports psychologist. So what these are is they make sure that the players have their heads straight and will keep their form up as stated in the game manual. And it does this by, you know, even if the minutes are suboptimal, so let's say they only play like 46 minutes that week, or they play slightly too many, like 78, 79 minutes that week, 
Even though the minutes for that week were suboptimal, with a sports psychologist, they're more likely to stay in better game shape and even pop to better game shape if you have a sports psychologist. So now, how do I get ideal minutes per week? So there's three main kind of player roles when I think about minutes per week and and how many minutes my players are playing. So the three kind of categories are nightly starters, trainees, and then backup slash role players. So for nightly starters, these are like the four to five players that you're just playing as starters in both league games, or if you have an important cup game, then you're generally starting them for that cup game. And what this typically looks like in order to get them in ideal minute range is you're starting them in two games um, for the week, and then you're not playing them at all in one of them. So you can see right there, the kind of minute range for most um, starters when you're playing them is about 30 to 38 minutes. It can go slightly higher or slightly lower depending on what you have set up for the backup and reserve positions. But in general, 30 to 38 minutes is a pretty good um, baseline for what you're looking at. And if you're doing that twice, so two starts of the three games that week, and then one you know, does not play, then you're looking at roughly 60 to 76 minutes for that week. So it gets them in a pretty good range. And then hopefully for those, it's slightly on the lower side. Because like I said, that optimal range to me is about 60 to 65 um, but if you do go a little bit higher into the high 60s, low 70s, I think that's okay as well. And now as for trainees, as most of you know, for training, the best method is kind of playing the 48 full game minute strategy where you play the trainee 48 minutes at that one position for the entire game. And then probably the next game, putting them in as a backup position. So if you're going the trainee position where they get 48 minutes the first game and then backing them up, that'll get them about 10 to 18 minutes depending on how close the game is. And then once again, for that third game of the week, you do not want them to play. That gets them set up for roughly 58 to 66 minutes that week, so it gets them in a really good range for your trainees right there. And then lastly, for the backups and role players, the backups and role players, these are the, these are the players that you're probably playing you know, in all three games that week. And then just to clarify, for the three games, we're talking about first league game, second league game, and then that cup or scrimmage. The private league matches and the um, buzzer beater madness games do not count towards minutes at all, so you can play them as much as you want in those games. But this is just for both league games, and then that cup slash scrimmage. But for the backups and role players, since a backup will play about 10 to 18 minutes per game, if you have a backup role player that does that twice, you're looking at between you know 20 and, and 36 minutes right there. So that's where in that third game, whether it's a cup or scrimmage, you, you could actually look at starting them. And it'll obviously depend on the exact minutes total entering that scrimmage or cup game. Um, where you might want to have them set as a backup and reserve, or you might want to have them set as just a starter. But for this, if you have them um, two backups and then a start, that gets them roughly in the 50 to 74 minute range. So this is where there's a lot more, a lot more variables and a little bit wider of a range. Um, but it generally gets them in a pretty good spot for those backup and role players. And then also just keep in mind that the backups and role players, while it's important to keep them in good shape. The players that you really want to maintain in good shape are those starters and trainees. So the backups and role players aren't as crucial to get in optimal range, but you just don't want them playing like, you know, 100 minutes a week or only 24 minutes or anything crazy like that. So now for ideal roster size. Uh, this is one that's been talked about a lot recently and I've wanted to do a video on and it tied in really nicely with this topic. But essentially, in my opinion, the ideal roster size is about 13 players. And this is where, depending on your experience with the game and, and how invested you are and, and you know how much time you have on your hands, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can micromanage minutes or you can be a little bit more casual about the minutes depending on your roster size. So you can see that for the NBBA teams right there, of the 16 teams in the top USA League, 
most players or uh, most teams are having 12 to 14 players on their roster. So of those 16 teams in the top USA League, uh, one team has 11 players, one team has 15, and the other uh, 14 teams all fall into that 12 to 14 player range with most teams having 13 players because that's what generally works the best in my opinion. So you can see my advice for roster size is if you're a newer manager in the game, you know, I know salary floor doesn't kick in for like brand new teams. So if you have a smaller roster to start out, I think that's okay. But once you start truly like trying to compete and win games in your league, that's where you're going to want pro probably 13, 14 players and a nice solid nine to 10 man rotation. For more experienced managers or, or managers who feel like, you know, I have a lot of time to set lineups all the time, really pay attention to minutes. I think you can reduce that to like an eight or nine man rotation and then only have 12 to 13 players. But I think 11 players on your team is where it gets a little bit dicey and it's really hard to manage the uh, the minutes per week with only like 10 or 11 players. So 12 to 14 is that range. I think 13 is the ideal roster size. So now getting your trainees perfect minutes, this is going to be the first part of the, you know, general like week guide that I have right here. So you can see that if you have two primary trainees, so like trainee A and trainee B in this example, this is primarily what you're looking at for those trainees. So as I discussed in the structure, that first trainee is going to play 48 minutes in that first game of the week. And then the other trainee you have set up as the backup in that game. So you can see starter B, let's say for example, trainee A is playing point guard and starter B is playing shooting guard. Training A is uh, training A is going to get 48 minutes at point guard for that game with no one coming in at uh, backup or reserve for that position. And then starter B is going to start that game. That's one of your, you know, best four players on your roster. And your other trainee is going to back up that position and get about 12 minutes for that game. So that leaves the starter with 36 and the backup with 12. And then for the second game of the week, that's where your trainees swap. So the trainee A becomes the backup for the starter B position. And the trainee B is the one that plays 48 minutes that game. And then once again, that leaves the starter B with most of the minutes. I have it set up for two different examples of like a competitive game where it's more like 36-ish minutes. And then one where it's like you bulldoze the opponent and you get a bigger win where they play slightly less minutes because the starters don't have to be out there for the last you know, six to eight minutes where you, you're closer to like 30 minutes a night. So this sets it up really nicely where your main training gets about 66 minutes as well as your um, starter B. And then your trainee right there is going to be a, a, at about 60 minutes depending on how much he plays in that first game. As for the rest of the crew, so this example, I'm using a nine man rotation. So like primarily looking at a standard nine-man rotation with a 13-man roster. So you'll notice that four players are not shown here. Going back to the previous slide, you can see trainee A, trainee B, and starter B. That's going to be three of the players. And then you have six players right here. So that's going to be your nine-man rotation. And then you can see right there, starter C through starter E. Those are the standard start them two games that week and then do not play the third. So they're all set up for about 66 minutes that week. And then for the backups are on that structure where they back up two games and then they're starting that third scrimmage in this example where they're getting roughly 64 minutes. And then where it gets a little bit interesting is that final spot for that ninth kind of rotation player. If that's a trainee, obviously you want them to play 48 minutes in that last scrimmage or cup game. If they're just a standard backup where you're like, I'm not training this player, I'm not worrying about training players, then that's where you can start them and get them into a more ideal range closer to that 64. For the four players who are not shown here, the reason that those extra players are important is because if you don't have those extra players, and that means that your seventh and eighth players in your rotation are forced to play 48 minutes in that scrimmage, so they're either coming away with 30 minutes on that week 
where they're coming away with 78 minutes that week. So it's either like not enough or too much. So that's where those extra players come in, where you can start two of those four players not shown, and then the other two can back up the backup C and backup D to alleviate those minutes where they can get closer to like 32, 34 minutes opposed to 48. And that's why those extra players of like those 12, 13, 14 man rosters benefits the teams because your backups are more likely to get into better game shape. And then just some final tips and tricks. So as I stated, blowout wins and losses can mess up minutes. And it's one of the more frustrating things in buzzer beater when it's like I, you know, I wanted my training to play 48 and he didn't because we won by too many points. Or I wanted my starter to play, you know, 32 minutes, but we were losing the entire game. So he played 39 minutes. And, and those are kind of the things where minutes can get messed up slightly depending on how the game is going. So it's important to make informed assumptions about how you think the game will go before you play them. Generally, you'll have an idea as to whether or not it's going to be a competitive game, whether you're going to win a lot or win by a lot or lose by a lot. So kind of planning that out um, if you have time during the week can be useful. And then, as I said, for blowout wins, starters will generally play less, backups and reserves will play more. And then in losses or competitive games, the starters will generally play more and the backups and reserves will play slightly less. And then the second tip is just it's nearly impossible to effectively start a player three times in a week. So that's where like the top teams in buzzer beater, they're not playing their starters three games a week. They're generally saying, okay, I need to prioritize whether I want to win both of my league games or if I want to win a league game and a cup game, and they kind of pick two games to prioritize that week. So reason for this is even if a starter, let's say you blow out your opponent three times that week and your starter only plays 28 minutes, but you play him three times. That gives them 84 minutes for the week, which is too many unless you have like a really good sports psychologist or your training game shape for that week. And then even if you're you know, starting two games and having your starter backup one as well, that can also lead to too many minutes. So even if they're playing 32 minutes, like a respectable slash lower amount for two games, and then you're playing them like 14 to 16 minutes in that third game, that's 76 minutes, which isn't bad, but it's really starting to push it where they're likely not going to stay in high game shape for very long if you're doing that repeatedly. And then the third tip is just that the more players you have on your roster, the more flexibility you have. So while some managers are able to, as I said, micromanage minutes with just 10 or 11 players on their roster, it is not easy to do consistently. It's a lot harder to manage overall. And the only downside of having 13, 14, 15 or more players on your roster is that you're paying that little bit extra for team salary. So that's where some of those really good teams, you'll notice like they have those you know, 45, 50 year old players that are only carrying like a $500 salary a week, where those players can be really useful because you're rostering players that can soak up minutes, but you're not paying that much team salary. So I recommend 13 players. I think that's the ideal and that's what's worked well for most managers and buzzer beater. Um, if you don't want to pay the extra team salary, I understand, but I think the benefits outweigh the costs for that team salary. If you can get your um, rotation as a whole into better game shape. So that's all I have on this topic. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. I guess let me know what type of roster you're running, how many players you have in your rotation, and how many players you have on your roster. Um, I'm carrying 13 on my main team, and then I'm actually carrying only 11 on my Utopia right now. Um, but I'm also not you know, focusing too much on winning on Utopia, so... Um, at some point, probably next season, I'll be looking at adding a couple players to, you know, make sure I have a little bit of an easier time running both of my teams. But yeah, let me know what you guys do for your teams. And uh, until next time, guys, have a good one.